this presentation of Orca Encounter has been modified. Thank you for your understanding. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to SeaWorld. You guys having a good day so far? All right. Excellent. Well, as you heard, we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty, but not with the killer whales. So you guys want to introduce and meet some of the whales? <coughs> Alright, so once again I want to welcome you here to SeaWorld San Diego Orca Encounter. It is home to 10 killer whales, 5 males and 5 females. So we're going to get things started with two whales coming out of the back. So get your cameras in the center of the pool. It's our individual one whale coming out. His name is Nikai. He was born right here at SeaWorld San Diego in 2001. Put your hands together for Nikai, right in the middle. Is SeaWorld San Diego's first killer whale born in 1988. Say hello to Orchid. And one more time over here for you guys. Very good. Now, as I mentioned, SeaWorld San Diego is home to 10 killer whales, ranging in age from our youngest, Amaya, at three years old, all the way up to our oldest, and many of you may know her, Corky, at 53 years of age. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what makes killer whales so spectacular and interesting and why you guys all came today. Now first and foremost, you notice that striking black and white coloration. Orchid is 6,000 pound killer whale. And that being a large mammal in the ocean, they are the top predator. So they're actually not afraid of anything. So that black and white coloration helps camouflage them from their prey. So think of it like a zebra. Zebras are black and white to hide from predators. Killer whales are black and white to confuse their prey. When they're swimming around a school of fish, that black and white coloration breaks up their body line and their outline, and the fish can't really tell if the killer whale's coming, going, up, down, left, right, where one stops or where one begins. Now, I did say they were mammals, so that means they're air breathing. They are warm blooded, and as you've heard about some of the animals we talked about, they, are, they give live birth and nurse their young. So let's talk a little bit about some of their adaptations to their aquatic environment. Over here, Nikai is going to be showing off his pectoral flippers. Here he comes right there. Very good. Now the reason those are called flippers and not a fin is because inside the pectoral flipper is a bone structure similar to that of your human hand. And those pectoral flippers are used for stopping and for steering. Now you'll also see, since these animals are very social, you'll see them scratching each other's backs with their pectoral flippers, and they will even use them, just like we communicate with our hands, you'll see the killer whales use them for communication as well. Good job, the guy. Now contrary to the bones in the pectoral flipper, if you all look at the dorsal fin as orcals, orchids swimming around on the perimeter, You'll notice that it's actually kind of flopping from side to side a little bit. That's because the dorsal fin has no muscle and it has no bone structure, just or unlike the pectoral flippers. So they can't control how it looks. It's kind of like your nose and your ears. Dorsal fins come in all different shapes and sizes. Male killer whales, when they become mature, their dorsal fins can be over six feet tall. So if you're over six feet tall without any bone or muscle in it, that can have a different shape to it and tend to bend to time to time. So again, our killer whales, dorsal fins come in all different shapes. Corky, our oldest killer whale, hers is still perfectly straight. And all the other ones have a slightly different curvature to them. Now, the other thing you're going to notice about the killer whales is their powerhouse. Orchid's about to show you guys right over here, maybe. On either side of their peduncle, you see Nikai right there. He's showing off his tail flukes. And as you just saw Orchid demonstrate, that's exactly how they're able to lift over 6,000 pounds out of the water. They do that in an up and down motion. It almost acts like it's spring loaded. So we'll see if Orca can show you guys over on this side one more time. Watch out, so so. <laughs> that feels pretty good on a hot day, doesn't it? <laughs> now, as I mentioned, killer whales are social animals, so they do communicate with each other in many different ways. I talked briefly how they use their pectoral flippers as part of their body language, but they also have a plethora of vocalizations that they can use to communicate. We've been able to train some of these vocalizations so that you guys can actually hear them, but we'll take a listen.
Now, if you listen real carefully, there it is. That's our favorite one. All right. So, since you guys came and joined us today, we're going to show you something a little bit different that not everyone gets to see. We're actually going to do a training session with the whales right here in front of you. So the way that we interact with the animals is training so that we can take better care of them, provide them with optimal health care, quality life, and learn about these animals so that we can translate this information to animals in the wild. So what we're going to be working on right now, though, is a behavior that Nakai is learning that is part of his exercise repertoire. These animals do all sorts of different natural behaviors throughout their day here so that we make sure that their minds are stimulated and that they're being physically challenged as well. Now, the basic way that we interact with our animals is getting them to follow a target. It simply starts off by following the eye contact of the trainer working with them. But obviously, I can't reach 20 feet into the air. So we extend our basic eye contact and focus to the end of a bead or the bead on the end of a stick. Now, for this behavior with Nakai, I need a very large one. So bear with me for a second. There we go. So as you can imagine, killer whales are about 20 feet long, and they can jump about 20 to 30 feet in the air. So the guy's on his way out. I'm going to tell him I want him to go right here. So I'm going to ask him by tapping right there. We're working on a behavior called a high jump, and he should be coming straight up sideways and touching the tip of that target. See if he can do it. Whoa. Almost there. Now, the important thing to remember here is that Mistakes are a part of learning. We focus on positive reinforcement here. So if a whale doesn't quite get the target full, we don't worry about that. We draw attention to the correct behavior. Variety is a spice of life for you guys. It's the same thing for the whales. So when we come out and interact with them, sometimes we're feeding fish, sometimes we're playing with toys with them and giving the toys to them as a reward, or giving them a back rub. And just like you guys, you guys like to go and do different behaviors to reward yourself. Some of you like to go shopping, read books, play with your friends, sports. Those types of rewards we can use with the killer whales as well. So with an animal like Nakai, who's very athletic and likes to jump around, we're using this as part of his reward with him too on his way out. So he's on his way out again. I'm going to watch for him to come through the channel. All right, we're going to do a second target pull to see if we can get him to focus on kicking his tail. There's that little encouragement right there. Come on up. He's facing me. Oh! It's pretty good. He's getting a lot closer to it there. So what we're really focusing on him for this behavior is we want him to be sideways and actually use his tail flukes and kick when he's up and out of the air. Now, one way that we can do that is we obviously keep practicing it. We're going to do a little approximation there. So all of our training is broken down into small steps, just like learning to read. Hi, Katie. <laughs> we learn to read. You learn the letters first, make words, sentences, and move on from there. So what Vicky's doing right now is going back to the basics of getting him to bring his tail fluke up, reinforce that. Now at this point, she can decide whether she wants to just leave it there, move on, and try it another day. Now Orchid here knows this behavior, and we're going to show you the final product. Okay. So when she's up in the air, she can hear you. So I want you guys to make a lot of noise for her when she's up there. She's going to make a little small siding jump over on the side. And in the center, one more time. Here she comes. <laughs> nice job, Morgan. Now she kicked her tail. That was very good. She kind of decided to add the flare to it and go all the way around. Now, as you can see, that's a big bulk of what we do every single day when we interact with these animals, is being up close and personal with them so that we can take care of them. And the way that we do that is not only do we train behaviors that allow us to show off their amazing strength and their abilities, but it also allows us to take better care of them. Without that, we could not be learning anything about these animals here in our care. So what you're going to see, uh, yes, you're learning biology right now in front of me. That's what killer whale stuff looks like when they've got to go. <laughs> now what you see happening in two places here you see orchid slid out there in front in front of mike out there that's one way that we can actually weigh the animals right behind this uh the amphitheater we have a scale that's on the side of the pool the whales can slide up onto that and we weigh them about once a week now more importantly what this behavior you see right here is called a tail fluke present now what this allows us to do is our vets. We can have Michelle pretend she's a vet, come down here, 
rub his, uh, his tail flukes because right on the surface of there, there's a very prominent vein that runs, and that allows us to obtain a blood sample to monitor the animal's overall health. Now, we do this on a routine basis because just like you and me, everyone has different blood parameters, and we want to make sure that the vets are getting a good picture of the animal's overall health. Lots of other things that we do with the animals, too, is we can do poolside ultrasounds, we can do x-rays, we brush their teeth on a daily basis, we even get breath samples from them, and as you saw, we can also get other types of samples from right here at the side of the pool to monitor their overall health, and the guy seemed to really enjoy showing that off to you. <laughs> All right, so you've learned a little bit about the whales that are here at SeaWorld, how we train them, and why we train them, most importantly, to learn about them and take care of them. You guys have been very patient with me hanging out here in the nice sun, sunny San Diego weather. How many of you guys are visiting us today from out of state? Raise your hands. Very good. Who wants to get wet? That did sound very enthusiastic. You guys want to stay in the heat or you want to get wet? Let's put our heads together, let's make some noise. Let's have some fun with Orchid in the car. Here we go.
So go ahead and get all your cameras out and get ready. We're going to have Orphan and Akai do one final behavior for you guys real quick. So everyone, you're not going to get splashed. Get your cameras out. Focus your sides on each side of the perimeter of the glass. I do want to take this opportunity to thank you for spending some time with us this afternoon. We do have another presentation at 5.30, so please come on back to that and enjoy the rest of your day here at SeaWorld, everyone. Thank you and bye-bye. Sorry, that's a 6.30 show, not 5.30. 6.30.